Hello there, angel of my nightmare, shadow in the background of the morgue, the unsuspecting victim of darkness in the valley. We could live like Jack and Sally if you want. Welcome to Sink Floyd, a podcast about Pink Floyd and sinking their 1973 magnum opus, The Dark Side of the Moon, with every movie ever made. We of course wow. kicked off with an iconic Pink Floyd lyric. Yeah, we did. Um, and I'm Gareth Blackler. Yep. And I'm James <laughs> Barron. I Hi. get you sometimes when I let you introduce yourself. Yeah, it's a little bit startling to me. Yeah, <laughs> I like I like the remix of that intro there. You rearranged everything, but you fucking yeah. nailed it, dude. Woo. Oh, Spicy. thank you. <laughs> uh, what that, can I say? That, that was one salty move, Gareth. <laughs> Check my MySpace page because I am salty. Mm. That's oh, in your goodness. bio. I'm making a direct reference to the movie that we watched uh, this week. It's Jennifer's Body. Uh, Yes. 2009? 2006? 2009. Directed by Karen Kasuma. Um, Written by Diablo Cody and famously starring Megan Fox, Amanda Seyfried, and Johnny Simmons. Yeah. Young Neil. Young Neil, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I was excited to see Young Neil in this film. Same. There yeah. were actually quite a few wee cameos that caught me off guard because I didn't look up Ooh. the sc- the, uh, the old cast beforehand. I was just happy to see a bunch of people here. But, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, speaking of happy to see, how we how happy were you to see this movie? What did you think of this movie? Well, I'd never heard of this movie at all before, and you hadn't like, heard of t- it at all. No, never ever in my life. I didn't what? know that it existed until you suggested it um, on the pod. Um, okay. Yeah, I just don't recall either, like, hearing about it releasing in theatres in 2009, uh, so, yeah, who knows? Like, but, uh, like, I did enjoy watching it. It's a, it's a very interesting movie, um, I mm. feel like it walks the line between two very, like, specific genres, and, yeah, it's a tricky thing to pull off, and I have some problems with it, but I also quite liked it, so, yeah, that's yeah. my current take. That's good. Yeah. I... Because we, yeah, we talked about last week that this film, its place in the canon has not been set. Like, no. If the, like, I think the reason people are always so excited to talk about like an old movie or like celebrate the anniversary of an album is because it's set in stone what that means. And unless mm. someone later goes on to do something horrific, um, <laughs> it's often that doesn't budge. But this movie, it's... It's like trying, it's essentially, it's like the goo that, um, Jennifer famously spits ah, out in this movie. That goo. Like, it's moving around, it's like going up and down when you think it should go left and right. Mate, you can't keep that goo down. You can't keep it <laughs> contained. It's, um, yeah, so it was hated when it came out. Um, yeah. It was Diablo Cody's first movie after winning an Oscar for, um, for Ju- Juno. Juno, and yeah. And... It was Megan Fox's first film after leaving the Transformers films Mm. due to um, Michael Bay being the worst. Yeah. And I think a lot of people wanted it to fail because they... Different ways they were finding Diablo, Cody, and Megan Fox annoying. Mm. And, like, pretty much all the reviews were just, like, from straight men saying, like, oh, it didn't give me enough boners. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Like, from my research into it, it, like, seems that... A lot of the reviews at the time were sort of, and also the marketing of the movie at the time were uh, putting this movie out there as like a, um, I don't know, it's like sex comedy horror romp thing for like young boys to watch. Like, take a look at Megan Fox's hot bod, you know? Even like, like, as you said, I think you, did you describe the poster on the last episode that uh, it's just Megan Fox like in a miniskirt and it says, hell yes, in the background. (laughs) Yeah. Like... That's kind of not indicative of what this movie is trying to say. Um, And so, yeah, I could see it being people being led astray at the time, absolutely. But yeah, as you say, I'll let you continue this point. Ah, and then, yeah, it's been in the last handful of years, like, an insane amount of new reviews have come out for a movie that otherwise could have been forgotten. Like, Mm. Vice published two reviews for it in the same month in 2018, saying like, oh, dang, this movie's good. And... Yeah, I so I kind of approached it through that lens, and if I I think if I'd gone in through the other lens, I would have been really pleasantly surprised. Mm. But in this version, I was probably kind of disappointed. Right. 
yeah yeah i i am with you on that actually like that is my my take from it as well is that like it is definitely trying to do something if you give it the read from that vox article um which we will get into i suppose then yeah. um it'll it, it somewhat disappoints in that it doesn't like fully commit to that um yeah and that it is also still trying to be the thing that it was marketed as i think there yes. was possibly some pushback um from like editors or someone intervening in the script or something um that seems that so it's trying to like be both those movies at the same time and it's kind of a worse movie for it i think yeah mm. it's trying to have its um teenage boy and eat him too if you ask me yeah absolutely because jennifer eats teenage boys yeah <laughs> yeah it's also sure. in- very hard to have an opinion on this movie because it is the most 2000s movie ever and i was alive in the 2000s kind of yeah it's oh my gosh the soundtrack to this movie is off the rails and it feels very um the whole throughout it's like teenage angst to the nth nth degree yeah Um, yeah i'm gonna mention this uh a little bit more later perhaps but um this movie reminded me a lot of the movie heathers have you ever seen it yes Um, yeah yeah similar kind of like story beats and vibe and that it's like high school students uh committing horrific acts you know? <laughs> yeah um yeah it's it's I kind of like through that lens i was able to enjoy it as well yeah, yeah that's a good point yeah and i think i just a lot of it i just felt i maybe didn't enjoy as much because i just felt too seen by how like oh, wow. 2000s it was and excuse the pun on scene with all the emo in it <laughs> yeah fair few scene kids including us in the audience oh my gosh amazing (laughs) uh yeah should we see how this very um uh 2000s comedy horror relates perfectly to a a 1973 prog rock album garrett yes we should yeah because that's the lens no one's looking at it through yet it's true there have been a lot of new takes yeah (laughs) and we're we're providing our own third take on this movie (laughs) yeah this is hopefully the definitive one we'll find out yeah oh my goodness yeah let's let's dive on in gareth if you're ready Um, so we open um with the old fox logo no fanfare though because we're getting gentle heartbeats true and then um a little voice says i've been mad for i've been mad for fucking years (laughs) <laughs> on the pink floyd album which is oh, great because yeah. we open in an asylum yeah it's it's like is it in a mental asylum or is it a prison i can't really tell like at this i point. think but it's a combination it, yeah it's it reads at the start as a mental asylum and then like late i think in an upcoming scene that we see um uh our, our key character what's her name um, needy needy yes we see her in like orange uh prison fatigue outfit you know yeah yeah and so i'm not entirely sure which is which but you know uh she's yeah she's here like she's talking about how she gets letters every day and Mm. uh she's got scars all over her body that we see so she's been through some stuff yeah Um, the pink floyd scream comes out when we see her first scar yeah which she 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 says that she didn't used to be this way in fact like none of them used to be this way like yeah yeah, we get a. Uh, I say that she's looking at a photo of young Neil. I d- probably don't <laughs> stop referring to him as young Neil. I, I don't remember what I did in my notes, but it was very hard for me to separate um, his uh, performance. Uh, he's called Chip in this movie. But, Chip um, Dove. Chip Dove? Yeah. Great name. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he plays a very similar character with a similar vibe. Um, yes for sure in the scott pilgrim movies in case you haven't seen that um yeah yeah her name is anita officially a uh, key character like but uh everyone calls her needy which i mm. think is like potentially a nickname that was given to her by jen uh key character that like uh, the key antagonist in the movie um and that she's like constantly needing them throughout their friendship you know yeah yeah and it's just stuck it's because they were such close friends she figured it was like a term of endearment but it's like kind of a rough nickname to have i think yeah especially to be getting from like friends mums and from your boyfriend and stuff yeah yeah 
uh she describes herself she's like i'm a kicker and then she like randomly just like kicks an orderly a nurse <laughs> down yeah. to the ground it was just trying to like offer some advice and help her yeah. out yeah some nutritional uh, advice yeah so she's like a wild woman <laughs> or something mm. something's gone wrong in her life here if we get to see how she became this way um it's, it's kind of interesting that the movie starts with this way yeah with her like basically at her lowest i um so I tried to watch, I was watching it without the, without the old Pink Floyd mm. initially. And then I realized I wasn't going to have time to do both. So I stopped it probably two thirds in and started it again with Pink Floyd. Oh, wow. And it's very confusing to see her, um, how she is in most of the movie versus how she is in this opening scene. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. A, it's kind of a, a complete turn. Um, yes. yeah, she's been driven mad by some killings, which is where she's like, when the killing started, that's when mm. everything changed. And you're like, oh God. Um, yeah. and they're playing a song. They like play a song into her little isolation cell that she's in. And she says she hates this fucking song. And I'm like, excuse me, breathe by Pink Floyd is a banger <laughs> and you should be ashamed of yourself, young lady. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then it's like, we get introduced to the town that the, um, uh, story takes place in which is called devil's kettle do you know if this is a real place or not or it's just like i made up? doubt it it's kind of cool i like that yeah. it's named after a waterfall that like goes into like a little vortex um nearby with the the eponymous uh devil's kettle as it is like Ooh. scientists try and figure out how this waterfall where like the things go and stuff yeah yeah i do like this that this also has a payoff later which is yeah it didn't need to be there but i did enjoy that um it's quite clever yeah. um there is a devil's kettle waterfall but it's a very different waterfall it doesn't go into an unknown hole okay. in the ground fair enough yeah great name for a waterfall if Heck so yeah. i want to visit it someday where is it out of interest it is in Min- northern minnesota oh yeah cool someday oh. Um, yeah, we get launch into like on the run as we approach a house. Over, yeah, uh, we're seeing like some uh, infomercial stuff in the background and the subtitles. Uh, like it's describing like getting fit and taking care of your body. Um, we're seeing like it's like horror movie like Evil Dead classic intro of like camera very very close to the ground running rushing towards a house. You know. Yeah, I think it's a direct horror call out which I enjoyed. Yeah, um, and it syncs very well to some on the run. Yeah, we see um, uh, our girl. Uh, already, I am really bad at remembering the Needy. title character. Yeah, it's terrible. Needy. Needy um is chilling outside uh, Jennifer's window, yes. very creepily here. Um, we don't know when this is taking place, but um, and then we get the title card on screen. It's like flash yeah. into a title card, which is really cool. So we cut to uh, two months later, basically, well, two months earlier. Sorry. Um, and where they're all basically just normal high school students hanging out. Uh, yeah. Jennifer, Jennifer wants to go and see an indie band uh, where the lead singer is described as extra salty, like I described yes. you in the, in the intro. <laughs> just some hilarious fake like high school terminology that I yeah. really enjoy. Very Diablo Cody. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to, love to hear that. Uh, yeah. And this is when we're getting at our most 2000s because she says... She's been on their MySpace page. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. And then we cut to Needy getting ready, and she's putting on, like, so many layers, the same way we all used to in the 2000s. Absolutely, yeah. She's told to wear something cute, which is code for, like, not to upstage Jennifer, but also not to embarrass her, which is, like, this is very indicative of, like, their relationship. We're we're introduced to it multiple times in that, like, she is, like the hot one effectively and <laughs> needy is the like nerdy uncool one but yeah. they were friends at a very early age and it just stuck and they just remained friends so it's like i feel like this movie in general uh like explores abusive relationships and also Ooh. explores uh like and between both men and women i think um yeah yeah oh my think, gosh yeah i, I think, didn't even read it like that and you're totally right even, um, cause then we kind of get Chip being like quite a, like soft boy, mm-hmm. sexist, like, are you going to wear that? Yeah, for um, sure. He's yeah. just, he's like exactly what I would imagine young Neil would say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she says, <laughs> she tells him that, um, 
uh, that uh, Jen thinks that the guy is super salty and explains that means salty is beautiful. Um, and Neil delivers the line, well, then you must be soy sauce, babe. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you weren't taking notes until you like, How to Be a Cool Dude book I, for that? No, I just left that book in my bedside drawer. <laughs> my cool boy, cool dude book. <laughs> me. Um, what was your also, last note in your cool dude book? I, I, I couldn't remember now. I'm so, uh, far, but, so far beyond that. Long are the <laughs> days where I've abandoned being a cool dude. <laughs> oh, no. That book's just getting dustier and dustier. Yeah, it's about self-acceptance. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, the clocks go off during this whole thing. They don't really align with anything. I just wanted to know that. Um, they also have, um, Jin and, uh, oh gosh, how does this keep happening to me? (laughs) Just make up a name. The listeners will know. Why do I, it's needy. It's just that it's not a real name that is like throwing me. It's so bad Uh, that I can't remember a character's name. I'm very tired. Listen. (laughs) Um, they have, uh, BFF necklaces, um, but yes. besides that, they basically have nothing in common, I think. It's, it's kind of interesting, the, di- the dichotomy between the two friends, I think. Yeah, for sure. Mm. It's so realistic to, like, high school friendships, and especially small towns, where it's just like, eh, you've been their friend forever, yeah. there's no, like, point to change. Pretty much. That's the vibe. Yeah. In this, in this thing. Um, young Neil keeps delivering these, like, fucking great night, the great uh, lines here. He describes the place that they're going to as a bingo, bingo hall with taps, which yeah. is a crushing indictment. I love it. Um, <laughs> and he also says everyone there has a mustache, which is hilarious. Yeah. I know exactly the vibe of this place before we even see it. <laughs> Just oh, this we have both been to this place. Oh, for sure. It's amazingly well done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good dialogue um yeah very happy with that um time's yeah. vocal kicks in exactly when they roll up on uh melody lane the bar yeah yes they drive on in um it's also the moments they make up a dull day over the montage of all the just kind of dull bar stuff very true they like yeah. describe how like mundane everything is um we get to see um, Ahmed from India is here, who's an exchange student that is sort of just like a character that's immediately disposed of. It's kind of interesting that the male characters introduced in this movie are the ones like added and then immediately disposed of. Like, yes. It's kind of a subversion of like what Hollywood does with a lot of female characters. In fact, like what, what um, Megan Fox's character was like in Transformers. Yes. Like, I don't think the Ahmed from India stuff is good. I think it's really... Oh. that it's like that's all he is and everyone calls him those three words in order oh yeah it sucks yeah but what doesn't suck is this is probably the only film i've ever seen that doesn't pass something i call the brosdell test because <laughs> right? at no point in this whole movie do two men talk to each other about any about something other than a woman it's true which is amazing like I ah oh, I thank this movie for the, that. The inverse <laughs> big yeah. <dull> test. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> oh man, uh, I don't know if we can construct some kind of graph to represent that, but I hope someone can. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, also, our listeners make a lot of graphs. Don't worry. Yeah, it's, we're, we're com- getting involved with our graphing community as well as uh, <laughs> yeah yeah the deep faking community. Basically, everyone. <laughs> you know, we're trying to broaden our horizons for this podcast. Yeah, if we weren't I'm going to promote already, this episode in a graphing uh, Facebook group if I can find one. Oh yes, niche city. It'll be great. Yes. Okay. Um. Yes. Also, Chris Pratt is in this movie. He shows up yeah. at the bar. He is a character for this one scene. <laughs> he is talked about later, but doesn't come back at all for no real yeah. reason. I feel like he's potentially a cut character or something, but he's sort of just here to be an ex flame of Jen, and that's about it. Um. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to see him get have like a grisly attack from Jen, but no, no. Apparently not. Just no. couldn't. The budget wasn't there. <laughs> <to get. laughs> yeah, I don't know. Was Chris Pratt in Parks and Rec at this time? Or was he? Um, Two thousand nine. Parks and Rec had just started. Right. So he okay. probably still wasn't much. Like he wasn't a hot commodity. Sure. Okay. He definitely wasn't like Star Lord at this point. Well, no. 
Maybe yeah. like midway through shooting the scene, he got the call that he was in Parks and Rec, and he just walked off. Maybe, yeah, it could be it's like he just walks out of the film, basically. Yeah, or maybe he's one of the person that get, people that gets like killed in this fire that's about to happen. Um, yeah, could well be. I guess that's what it is, but yeah, it's still. I don't know. It still feels a bit of a like. No. But he's, he just isn't even mentioned. You would think that like they would. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like if if he did die in the fire, then like he would at least get his name said. <laughs> A bit later, mm. I don't know. Um, yes, yeah, so the band uh, playing here that they've come to see is called Low Shoulder, um, which is a driving reference, I believe. I don't know. I don't drive. Um, <laughs> and uh, there, the lead singer is immediately all over Jennifer, uh, like likes her. They had like uh, talking back and forth. It's all fine. Um, she yeah. goes to get them a nine eleven tribute shooter, uh, Gareth. Which, yes which is an insane thing you have to drink it very fast because it's red white and blue stacked liquors but if you don't drink it fast they all blend together and become brown this is this joke is darker than any of the horror stuff fucking a yeah <laughs> it's amazing like again great writing there I, I, yeah it's wild this unfortunately is immediately followed up by really bad dialogue and that jen says that she'll go in order to get the drink she'll go and play hello titty with the bartender which yep. is not even a thing really <laughs> no it's, i did not like that barely a reference this is the kind of thing that like makes me think that this movie is still trying to be that um like teenage boys love megan fox movie like this, yeah for sure th- like these kind of lines and scenes keep happening through this movie i don't know yeah it, and it brings it down for me it's definitely like the most uh crystal clear those two lines next to each other because one's definitely from the movie they wanted to make yeah it's like dark 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 comedy and the others from the movie oh mr fox wanted them to make yeah, yeah. donnie fox donnie fox <laughs> who knows the unfantastic it's just like surrounded by searchlights <laughs> yeah the worst um yeah there's she also describes herself as uh that like we overhear the band talking about her like hoping that she's a virgin and we're like that's kind of crazy um yeah uh and jen says that she's not even a backdoor virgin <laughs> thanks to chris parrott's character which is yeah great okay cool <laughs> i didn't need to know that um, it is kind of like i did kind of like the line though that she couldn't uh, go to flags practice because she had to sit on some ice yeah like it's such a wholesome variation on that weird weird little line i guess so it's yeah <laughs> i thought it was a little bit out of left field but hey yeah it's yeah the sex in this movie is in your face at all times <laughs> yeah. basically so if that's what it's going for then bravo uh mm. yeah um the i've written my next note is that the band is doing a startling startlingly good impression of pink floyd's great gig in the sky um <laughs> in their performance uh just, yeah just it's... shout out to the indie band covering that pretty impressive um yeah not it the sounds easiest, exactly like it yeah not the easiest uh vocal work to no <laughs> to do <laughs> Um, and it's very exciting to hear Great Gig in the Sky while looking at a great gig. It's true. Oh. Well, what's it? Yeah, that's great. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> um, yeah, the girls... We do, they... if you don't mind, we do need to talk about the this band, Lost okay. Shoulder, and the beautiful casting of Adam Brody as the singer. Yeah. It's like pretty spot on. So good, because they tried to cast um, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy. Wow, yeah, but, that um, would have been pretty amazing. Yeah, he kind of... I don't think he was that keen or maybe like too busy. Um, but then they like nailed it. Like this guy is, this actor's already coded in all our hearts. as the mm. guy who brought us indie music. Like <laughs> he's the number one publicist for Def Cab for Cutie. There you go. Brody. And here he is here nailing he is. it, nailing he's this role. Got a crescent moon tattooed on his neck. <laughs> yes. Uh, which is apparently important. I don't really know. It's just like sort of symbolism, but yeah, not really. Uh, I have written down that the, the girls hold hands briefly during this song um, and then that like slips away. And there's a beautiful like, you know when you press on your hand and you kind of see a light that remains light. There's probably a, a, all our scientist listeners are screaming at me for this. Sure, yeah. But the like, like blood like rushes back to where you're press- where you were pressing. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that sensation depicted in a movie, but they've chosen to do it as um 
Jennifer lets go of Needy's hand, and it's oh. like says so much. It's so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even, didn't even think about that. Oh. A very close reading of this movie. I'm into. It. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, this uh, set is interrupted by the whole bar catching on fire. Not really for any reason. I think just no. faulty electrical equipment. Um, yeah, the whole bar just catches a blaze. And it's a very violent fire. Everyone's yes. like... Like, people get set on fire. Um, yeah. Like, running around outside. They escape... Uh, the girls escape by um, running out of the bathroom window, jumping out there. But there were like people trampling on other people to try and escape. It's crazy. Yeah, it is actually like a bit harrowing. Yeah, it's a bit harrowing. More again, more so than the like actual murders that happen later. Yeah, I would say so. This is kind of the best like visual effects in the film, I yeah. reckon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, the band dude I've written, the lead singer, uh, appears uh, with them and is like, "Oh, you're all fine. I'm so happy to hear that." Not at all. Like he doesn't care at all um and yeah. he's very very chill with the bar like fully on fire behind him yeah and he's, he's already holding like a full whiskey yeah glass and of whiskey. he's trying to usher uh jennifer into a van and she like is into it wants to go along but kind of is kind of sketched out as well and needy's like no don't take her away it's like messed up and yeah, yeah she just gets like ushered into this like creepy van it's described as like a molester's van in the movie um yeah uh yeah and we don't know what happens to her she gets taken away um yes it's uh, pretty rough this is this happens over money's intro rolling in which yeah. is not at all appropriate there um, is a perfect um explosion of like a gas explosion to one of the cha-chings of money that legitimately made me jump so that was exciting <laughs> i like that okay i didn't catch that one that's a good that's a good old sync though <laughs> just some... like a lot of I'd say we probably had this with a quiet place too, mm. and the thing, like a lot of jump scares are really um, dulled by just Pink Floyd not quite syncing up with it. True, yes. So it was good to have Pink Floyd play along for once with They're a nice jump. Scare. Catching on with this bar explosion yeah. scene. Um, yes, uh, she describes the lead singer as uh, skinny and twisted and evil, like a petrified tree I saw when I was a kid. <laughs> I thought, yeah. thought that was interesting, uh, an interesting descriptor, but like, I, it, again, this doesn't come back at all. I just thought that was like a strange thing that I noted down and never came back. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. They drive home. Needy calls her boyfriend. Uh, and young Neil. Yeah. Young Neil. <laughs> Chip <laughs> on the phone. Cause like, there's been a really messed up thing with Jen and she doesn't know what to do. And then there's someone outside her house. And Tracy's freaking out about that. This is all very uh, classic horror movie stuff here. Yes. This whole sequence of like, uh, we see shadows on the on the wall moving behind her when she goes, there's no one at the door, stuff like that. She like goes to turn off the like faucet that's on for no apparent reason. Um, because like, this is what made the noise, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, um, Jennifer appears in the house um, covered in blood all over her mouth um and all over her body uh she looks like very pale as well uh not looking so flash no <laughs> uh yeah really freaks out uh old needy and um starts eating like a chicken out of the fridge <laughs> uh which is like i'm not allowed to eat that chicken <laughs> which yeah. i thoroughly enjoyed um but yeah apparently he doesn't enjoy that chicken and vomits this nightmare oil all over the floor and needy yeah um yeah, the the oil that moves by itself, uh, just classic demon horror stuff, you know. Yeah, a young uh, James Cameron is watching this and being like, "This gives me an idea." Yeah, this is so. Um, he loves CGI goo. He loves all kinds of water physics. This yeah. boy. Did you hear that Avatar Two has finished um, filming? Yeah. Like the they, but how long it will be in post production remains to be seen. I assume like a couple of years. Oh, they don't even mean post-production. Oh, that no, is... no, no. The actual, like, f the capturing of footage is complete at this point. Oh, man. So, <laughs> it's probably still a ways off. Oh, I... what if they just sneak it into, like, the warehouse and stuff and pretend they did release it in 2012? Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, I saw a yeah. great tweet, um... 
from somebody on Twitter, I can't remember who now, but they said, uh, in, re- in response to this, they're like, man, I can't wait until December 2014 when this comes out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? I saw that as well. That was Guy Montgomery's tweet. Oh, nice. Shout outs to you, yeah. Guy. Um, fellow podcaster. <laughs> awesome. Um, yes, yeah, so after, after this nightmare oil issue, uh, she just sort of like vanishes. She runs away, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've written, I've written, you know, this is all stuff that matches money in my notes. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting, like, money solo <laughs> playing over this. Uh, yeah, she, like, goes to call... No, she's still there. She goes to call an ambulance, but Jennifer, like, stops her. Yeah. And then, yeah, we get, like, a little bit of aftermath at the burn-down bar after that. Yeah. Uh, with, like, people repairing it. And then, but... Uh, it's a huge deal to basically everybody else in the in the whole movie that this bar burned down and multiple people dies. Yeah, but uh, as it would be, but yeah. then everyone still just goes to school the next day. Yeah, it's true. the The teacher delivers like a uh, fantastic. J.K. Simmons is the teacher here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, t- what delivers like an exceptionally dark <laughs> speech about all the different people that died. Like one yeah. of the teachers died. Eight students have died. Like it's insane. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Jennifer shows up at school completely normal. It's like it was a dream. Um, yeah, and she's just like cracking jokes this whole time. Like doesn't care at all. It's like she doesn't remember what happened. Um, yeah, yes. Uh, also, <laughs> Needy's like trying to like talk to her, being like, "Do you not remember <laughs> like vomiting <laughs> nightmare oil on me?" And, like, she shows her fingernails that have all been blackened by, like, cleaning it up in the morning. Mm. There's a shot of her, like, weeping and cleaning it, which is awful. Um, Yeah. And then, yeah, she just, like, (laughs) Jennifer's like, man, you really need to do something about those nails. (laughs) Oof. It's rough. So rough stuff. I love it. Yeah. Like, how did you, how did you feel about J.K. Simmons showing up, though? stoked stoked to see him him and his yeah. hook hand he's lost a hand for no real reason again no but great stuff i love this boy yeah big fan of jk excellent he's wearing actor. a little curly wig like uh yeah 90s justin timberlake he is <laughs> <laughs> he has a he has some fun stuff to do in this movie yeah. so i'm happy to see him here i think this is before he was like doing really serious stuff you know yeah this would have been in between i guess spider-man yeah I think he, his other movie this year was uh, he was the dad and i love you man oh yeah nice another yeah. another like fairly cheesy comedy yeah S- sweet um yeah so needy like is getting nothing out of gene so goes to like talk to chip about what happened uh he thinks all this is just basically stress related uh mm. all this stuff that that like, was all like a nightmare ptsd fever dream that she had after the bar explosion you know and also yeah, which very fair yeah and also the stress of seeing um jennifer disappear in this van you know mm. like it's all pretty terrible um so he thinks it's to do with that he's not like treat he's not thinking anything supernatural happened and then uh boy colin uh shows up the turbo emo kid the like <laughs> quintessential hack dwelling emo friend here uh. I'm Nobody understands him. what you mean by hack, by the way. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no one no one understands. It's a very specific Christchurch reference. Yeah, uh, hack was uh, in the center of Christchurch. It was a uh, raised bit where people could sit and it became <laughs> the emo like, hangout. Yeah. That's correct, right? I was never really cool enough to hang out there. I didn't ever go there, yeah, no. It, it, was, yeah. Uh, it was very popular amongst the, the emo population, emo and scene kid population. So much yeah. so that they installed speakers around that area and blasted classical music to drive yeah. them away. I would, I would think now that if you were a true emo kid, you would enjoy the classics. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> you would just be vibing to a bit of, like, Beethoven, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But no, it was enough to drive them away. So clearly they weren't the true fans. No. Uh, only Maybe the they were just trying to get more yellow cards to start. Like emo bands with one violinist. Yeah. That's that's all I'm hoping for. Yeah. I just want a, re- a yellow card comeback. That's all I want. Oh, yeah. If we could you know. find them now, things would get better. They would. Nice. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> um, yeah. 
so he he shows up and he just wants to say that he's happy that needy survived he's just a nice wee friend who has like been in classes with needy before and is just like yeah i'm happy that you're alive and didn't die in a fire yeah yeah it's just a a nice wee scene i'm he's introduced for later basically but um anyway there's a, a crazy zoom now smash cut to a, the deepest zoom of like someone running <laughs> yeah. across a field towards a single man this is the weirdest shot in the movie i think yeah it's just like <laughs> it's really long it's like a, just a hard zoom on this boy jonas um who is a guy who lost we saw him crying in the previous scene in class uh, he's a guy who lost his best friend in the bar fire um, so it's hit him pretty hard. He's a big jock yeah. guy with a letterman jacket, you know. Um, and yeah, Jennifer just like, we see her to the left of him and then she appears out of, as if out of nowhere to his right, which is... Yeah. Like, she's like, oh. Very strange. Yeah, supernatural stuff occurring. Um, she's like uh, <laughs> saying that people were talking about them and saying that they would be a good couple. And she, like, sort of leverages this dead friend to, like, yeah. get him to go and have sex, which is really weird, but somehow works. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah. His heart's broken, but his penis isn't. Yep, damn right. Um, so, yeah, they go off into the woods to have some sex, and, like, a bunch of animals <laughs> show up yeah. to watch them, like, in pairs as well. There's, like, a, a pair of crows and, like, some, like, porcupines and stuff. It's really yeah. weird. Is this to do with, like, the demon thing, or is it just, like, I don't know. <laughs> That's it... a good point. I assume the demon thing, but I also kind of like to think the animals and devils kettle were just, like... Yeah, they're just friendly freaky. friendly foes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Here to take a wee look at what's about to go down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they all, yeah, it could be, like, related to this demon possession issue, or it could be just random. Who knows? Yeah. Never explained. Never comes back as well. There's like one no. crow later on in another sex scene. There's like an animal that appears. Um, but hey, who knows? Yeah. Weird. Uh, yes. Uh, th- so they start like having fallen around. Um, then, yeah, she turns. Fallen around. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> what? They do. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Here we go. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, before anything is, serious can take place, uh, her mouth opens with some very bad CGI, and uh, she a big monster mouth and bites his face. Or, yeah. like, bites into the camera, because we're getting his perspective, you know. Um, yeah, later on we see him uh, disemboweled, which is pretty awful. Uh, and one of those deer just nibbling away at him. Just having is... a wee go, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, gross. Yeah uh jk simmons is overhearing i believe the screaming i don't we i know subtitles here so i can't really tell uh but he's just like let it out students <laughs> yeah he thinks it's just grieving about the fire which is rough stuff but hey yeah play for laughs uh and then it's also jk simmons that discovers uh his body in the woods with the deer yeah 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 awful uh yes i move on now to we see meet needy's mum who like works the night shift which explains why she's never around but she's yeah. just like working really hard and having very surreal nightmares about like needy being hung up on the cross like jesus christ um yeah she's pretty, also played by like comedy legend amy sedaris and yeah yeah kind of wasted absolutely she's like very i think this is her one scene apart from the, this in like the prom sequence yeah. is like the only time she shows up in the movie but hey oh. whatever she's sort of just thrown away she's just having some nightmares more spooky stuff occurring anyway yeah guess telling us that need is in danger i don't know uh yeah the parents of the dead jock guy are like freaking out he, the dad proclaims that he'll cut the nutsack off someone who did this and nail it to his door like a fancy door knocker um yeah bad dialogue <laughs> not into this i don't joke. know i kind of liked it i kind of liked that um it, it it's was a, it's a long joke like he yes he, he like delivers this like really long line and very descript detail about like what he's going to do to the person who did this um i don't know didn't land for me but fair enough no uh so we get uh yes here we get an inexplicable megan fox swimming in the lake scene and this is why this is another factor for me where it's like is is this trying to be like a feminist forward movie or is it just like 
trying to walk the line here of being yeah. like, for the young impressionable boys or whatever. Oh, Megan Fox is hot. Like that yeah. kind of vibe. I don't know. Because this is it's... completely unnecessary. And it's like an yeah, extended sure. like slow-mo sequence. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think the lake, the lake looks beautiful, but like yeah. I can't imagine anyone being horny from the scene. Just like, oh yeah, yeah. she did a murder. She's having a swim. I guess so, but like it's just yeah. kind of unnecessary. Like, why is this even oh, in the sure. movie? Like, if uh, my take is from the like the the later readings of this movie, and that like if you take it that way, then this scene shouldn't just shouldn't be in the movie because it doesn't add yeah. anything to that. It should have been cut. I don't know. No, you're right. It does, however, though, we kind of get the lo- we get the lunatic is on the grass while she's doing it, and that kind of thematically sinks. She's not on the grass, but she's, you know, She's definitely a nature. lunatic. I feel like there's a better lunatic on the grass uh, sink coming up later, shall oh, we yes. just say. Um, yes. Uh, so, yeah, Jean is still, ter- is still telling Needy that she needs to move on from this, like, whole disaster that occurs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's well past it, but the whole town <laughs> isn't. Um uh then we cut to she's like talking on the phone with um chip again and inexplicably his little sister camille is just playing the piano (laughs) interrupting the phone call i love this i I loved camille's piano playing yeah it's it's just this is the kind of joke that i like (laughs) (laughs) just really dumb inserting of like characters doing strange things that's what i yeah I love, um, like, this is, like, deep comedy nerd stuff, but a joke that implies a whole story behind it... Yeah, right. ...will always get me, and this is one of those, like, is she always doing this? Exactly, right? Like, that's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, yes, Jennifer in the background asks about, um, Chip's penis as well. And does she... She's, like, on hold with, um, uh, with Needy on the other line. And while she's doing this, she burns the tip of her tongue with a lighter because she's full demon mode here. Yeah. Just cause. This was a very iconic scene. Um, yeah. I think it was in all the trailers and stuff. And it's, it's pre- pretty badass. Pretty good effect. I liked it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, then Chip, like, wants to meet with Needy. That's what this phone call is about. And uh, fills her in about Jonas dying. And Needy is like, oh, it's Jen because she's been acting weird. You know, she puts yeah. that together immediately. And Chip's like, what? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's the, he, she's kind of figured it out already at this point. But yeah, we, oh, get, yeah. we get Eclipse playing. So we're at the end of the playthrough here. Um, and we're seeing uh, everyone's still really sad about the fire, <laughs> except for Jen. There's like candlelight vigils. We're getting mm. like a flash forward, like a whole month here, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. um, Low Shoulders' song is, like, blowing up. And... Yeah, they're getting massively popular. Uh, yeah. So, yes. Um, I love... This reveal is the smartest part about this movie, so, yeah, I'm going to hold off on that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a cool little shot as well of the... Fl- there's a photo of Jonas, like, surrounded by flowers that wilt very quickly mm. as if they're through, like, um, like uh, time lapse. But very, very well done, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then, yeah, it's we- a month later, J.K. Simmons walks into the science class, and for some reason, he's the one giving them all the news that Low it's Shoulder um, are donating money to the fire. Yeah, they're donating 3% of their profits, <laughs> which is yeah. not very much. Um, and oh, also, no. Playthrough 2 is starting for us, so this is... I like that it's like one month later, and we enter Playthrough 2 here. Um, yeah. Yes, they're also, like, they're perceived as a very popular band, Low Shoulder, but they're also, like, American heroes, <laughs> somehow? <laughs> That's what the yeah. one of the other students uh, claims. Very strange. Yeah, they, um, on their Wikipedia, it says that they saved everyone from the fire. Yeah, so it must be true. Yeah. Yeah, a good bit. I like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, Jennifer, inexplicably, not looking so well, not looking great. No. Still Megan Fox, so looking okay. Yeah, so still but... looking great. Like, yeah. movie standard. Yeah, but, like, it's, like, has rings around her eyes and is looking quite pale or something. Is mm. That's the extent of her um, not looking okay. Uh, yes, she says that, pe- like, 
media suggests it could be PMS, and she says that PMS was invented by boy-run media to make us seem crazy. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Quite the claim. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Uh, Emo Colin rocks up to ask Jennifer out to go see Rocky Horror. Uh, great film. Uh, she says she doesn't like boxing movies. Very good. <laughs> really line. good. Really good joke. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic. Classic bit. And Colin's like flustered by this and gives up, basically, <laughs> which is fair. Yeah. Um, uh, but until Needy expresses interest in Colin, she's like, oh, Colin is, um, like, I think Colin's pretty cool. He's a nice guy. Uh, we're hanging out with him in class sometimes. And that's when Jennifer, like, is interested in him and steals him. Yes. Again, this is like the abusive relationship coming out thing and that she's, like, stealing him away. But only because, like, she has no interest in him at all. But it's, like, despite uh, ne- Needy here. Yeah. Mm. That's my read anyway. Yeah so then yeah she asks him instead of going to the movies she's like hey come and hang out in my house yeah i've rented um aquamarine which is a movie about a girl who is half sushi yeah real movie i I think right yeah yeah except she's obviously half fish yeah she's a mermaid (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh one of those yeah um (laughs) it's the i've heard of mermaids what are you talking about yeah you know about mermaids right those half fish (laughs) Half fish, right. Half, half Frantically fish. Googles. Born of person and fish parentage. Ooh. Who knows? Um, yeah. So next up, it's um, Chip and Needy are planning on having sex for the first time. Um, like, that's the stage of their relationship that they're at. And Chip's yeah. saying that he bought some condoms, which is like the most dorky way of going about that. But it's quite a funny. Yeah, very transactional. Yeah. <laughs> And she's like, oh, okay, I guess that's happening. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so them like preparing to have sex with each other and it's intercut with Colin heading to Jen's quote unquote house. Um, yeah. Uh, there's also in the background, Gareth, I want to mention there's an I can see clearly now pop punk remix that we aren't hearing. Um, yes. I can identify this from the lyrics, and I like briefly toned down Pink Floyd so that I could hear what this was. And boy, oh boy, <laughs> this remix! <laughs> Woo! I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. It's like it is like Scar almost. <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh, by Screeching Weasel, who were uh, actually one of my favorite bands in high school. Hell yes, that's I love incredible. a bit of Screeching Weasel. Bit of Screeching Weasel can't go wrong. But um. What, so I, this I got to this part when I was watching Without the Floyd, right? And this song is so loud in yeah. the movie, like you don't hear any sound effects. <laughs> it sounds like it's. I for a second I was like, "Am I playing something else? Am I accidentally, you know, sinking again?" Yeah, <laughs> have I accidentally so started sinking, screeching weasel with this movie instead? Yeah. Basi- I've skipped to a different track in my iTunes. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh. Uh, my um, Apple Music, sorry. <laughs> oh, so I still run iTunes. I haven't updated yeah. my computer. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, it's also impossible, I tried it, to sing I Can Cle- Sing Clearly Now over On The Run by Pink Floyd. Yeah. It wasn't designed to be that way, I think. No. If someone can put together that mashup, hit us up, please. Yes, please. I'd love to hear it, because that sounds like a great challenge. Um yes so jen actually hasn't given him uh her home address she's given him the address to a like abandoned empty house is this house under construction or is it like yeah okay it looks like it like it's got some construction stuff around it yeah pretty much the whole neighborhood seems to be incomplete i think this is like small town stuff or like them expanding the town to accommodate more people but it's just like very spooky at night time there's nothing around there's chain link chain link fences everywhere yeah yeah um interesting interesting set dressing for this upcoming scene uh yeah the yeah. crash i've said that the crash sound does align with him trying to break into the boarded up door uh which is a minor sync but hey hmm that's yeah i'll take that <clears throat> yeah all the clocks go off when he's like wandering around inside uh, yeah i was annoyed moment. there wasn't like a good jump scare yeah box. nothing we don't even see like jennifer lurking in the background or anything that would have been great yeah uh yeah we get to like 
cut back and forth between the two couples here um there's like a sex scene over time solo and also a nightmare scene taking place at the same time in this abandoned house where mm. poor colin is just put through the ringer um he like gets his hands slashed uh this this is also where these animals show up by the way there's like a crow, <laughs> yeah, some a crow that appears in the house and like buffets him and he's like oh <laughs> and then later on there's like some rats and jennifer's like ah oh, you're emo surely you like vermin boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is such good floor play my goodness um, oh yeah yeah uh to be fair tell me i'm emo and i'm gonna ca- call that flirting okay well wow. that's how important emo was to me back in the day oh gosh yeah, I, big, big, big part of your life. I just had a scariest flashback of me on early Bebo, just riding on some, oh. a stranger's wall like, hey, I'm an emo guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Ick. I'm an emo guy. Hey, I'm an emo guy. Oh, wow. Uh, they didn't ride back. So, oh. Yeah. Man, Bebo. I haven't thought about that in a long time. They're, That's like, the... You- you could draw awesome. on people's walls. I remember. I remember doing a lot of bad drawings just with my mouse. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you were one of those cool guys who would do the. You do the drawing with your mouse, but because you could watch it getting drawn. Oh yeah. Um, you'd tell like a little story through it. Oh yeah, I remember that. Man, all right. Yeah. Oh, I would so put this James. podcast on Bebo if I could. Oh man, give us the Bebo podcast that everyone's <laughs> craving yeah yeah maybe we'll do a mini bebo show within our show <laughs> um yes so yeah poor poor colin gets put through put through the ringer he gets his like arm broken and then like also like disemboweled by uh evil gen here yeah terrible bad times there's a shot of her like feasting on him uh not great cgi but it's fine yeah it'll do yeah um yeah then so needy like during the sex scene here has like a vision of uh dead jonas for one yeah. sitting in the chair like blood all over him terrible times and jen like crouched over the ring style next to her um very spectral and scary and she just yeah. what did she just start saying like useless or something like that she like, yeah, something like that. I wish I could remember. She starts chanting something, like, which is not putting off old Chip. He keeps going yeah. anyway, which is gross. Um, well, her initial, like, gu- scared gasps, he misreads as, like, a good thing. Yeah. It's good gasps. And then when she's upset, he goes, like, oh, no. And then briefly pauses and, like, is a bit excited, like, am I too big? Yeah. Terrible. Which is a, yeah, not a great joke. Very of its time. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, she, like, races off to go and find Jen because she senses, like, something bad is happening. Um, yeah. So in tune with each other in terms of being best friends, I think, that they have this kind yeah. of connection. Um, and, yeah, uh, she nearly crashes into her in the middle of the road. She's standing there covered in blood, just like before, um, when she appeared in her house. Mm. And she, like, leaps like a scary frog <laughs> onto the hood of, <laughs> onto the hood of her car like yeah. crashing into the windscreen very scary um and this is all over great gig in the sky <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh no not a good fit but hey uh there's a couple of flashbacks where we get to see um uh needy watching jen at the cheerleading and then jen being shut away in the van so like she's still like i feel like she's possibly bl- blaming herself for not stopping jen in this in this instance or like yeah yeah it's it's very rough stuff yeah and and then jen randomly appears in her bed like perfectly Mm. fine and it's like what and we get a uh they start making out um as it's like a strange uh lesbian sex scene almost here um yeah yeah i think it's this is interesting and that like it's uh this is the most contested part of the movie in my mind like what this represents is it just uh is it just again like let's see two girls make out on camera ha 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 or is it like the abusive relationship playing out and that she's like leading um needy on this entire time and this is like what their relationship is sort of founded on this like Ooh. un like untapped like sexual energy between the two of them like yeah. is that 
um, like Needy actually is in love with Jen or and like Jen is like abusing that love to get what she wants you know I think it's definitely the latter yeah it's maybe Jen I mean maybe Needy's like actually yeah unrealized kind of bisexual crush but and like yeah Jen's always known this and can manipulate her with it but like it's also this kiss goes on for ages yeah and like it's also very close up and um if you don't have pink floyd playing very loud yeah mm, okay good so yeah i forgive it because it's tricky of what right? you said yeah. like it could be either like it's it, this is the like I, I i can't decide which it is in my mind like it, it could be both it could be either it's yeah yeah I, it's really strange but what follows after this she like cuts it off like um yeah needy's like oh i can't do this um so but and jen says that she'll tell her what happened that best friends shouldn't keep secrets from each other and so she tells the story about what happened after the fire and getting shut into the van um this is maybe the most interesting part of the whole movie to me um yes (laughs) very quickly because it is actually really interesting and deep and stuff it's a flashback to a scene that happened just after money started and now money's starting yeah money's playing over this again yeah yeah so that's pretty nice and that it's like the same time period playing out again yeah it would be cool if it was like a hard cut between when that scene ended and when this like starts like we get the same point of money that would be neat but unfortunately not the case um yeah so we've got the band uh taking her away like need to know if she's a virgin and she's saying that she is a virgin thinking that it would dissuade them from like whatever it is that they want to do to her um and they are like oh see she is a virgin It's, it's gonna be fine Um, yeah the band it turns out are satanists and they're going to perform a ritual on her assuming that she's a virgin in order to gain uh success and fame that like they state that being an indie band is very difficult because uh, there are a dime a dozen everybody is an indie band and unless you get on like a television show or something it's impossible to get successful and so satan is their best shot (laughs) yeah that's what they say um they yeah. also say like there's so many of us and we're all so cute yeah which i liked that's very funny um yeah yeah so they yeah they are going to sacrifice her as like advancement of their band um there's a couple of very funny lines i'm going to cover this whole scene and then we'll talk about it um all right there's a couple of very funny lines in that like he is using a knife that he's like oh what what is what is that and he's like oh it's a bowie knife and another guy goes oh bowie nice (laughs) (laughs) yeah which is really dumb um and then yeah they stab her to death over singing the lyrics to eight six seven five three oh nine which is uh jenny and a fairly famous song Um, yeah great song i probably ruined for me forever now (laughs) uh based on this scene because they just sing away like laughing and singing this song just stabbing it yeah um you gotta say a good horror movie should be able to ruin a song for you yeah like yeah there you go um so this scene um it's a the read on this in modern day is that this is an analogy for rape basically like a rape yeah. playing out and also like the me too era and that people using uh you pe- people using ladies and uh for their own professional gain you know yeah and discarding them and yeah that's the read on this movie that this scene establishes uh it's kind of interesting like i wish that this was explored a bit further like it's it's a strange take for a horror movie to uh make especially in 2009 um yeah pretty far ahead of its time i would say Uh, i feel like they might have had to kind of lean you know how you're like oh what is like what's the kissing scene trying to say yeah i feel like a lot of it they had to lean very hard into the stuff that would get the movie made so they could get the scene the way they wanted it right uh, yeah that could very well be true actually yeah so yeah the read is that the rest of this movie is like a revenge story uh against like rapists effectively um yeah and that, and that jen is like going around and like murdering like bad like idiot boys and also like later on uh needy gets revenge on these like rapists on these guys you know yeah so yeah it's like a revenge story for uh someone that's been abused or uh raped yeah yeah and what's um interesting is none of the early reviews the ones that were like 
oh, this movie's dumb. I'm not, it's not sexy at all. None of them really mention this scene. No. They were just I feel like they didn't get it at the time. The kissing scene. And then, like, all the recent reviews um, mainly focus on this scene. Hmm. Yeah, it's tricky because, like, I feel like it isn't really explored very deeply beyond this one scene. Like, we don't get, yeah. like, many more, more scenes with this band or any kind of their motivations or, like, any, like, it's not explicitly stated or, like, there aren't... If, I feel like it would be more clear if, like, all the other people that were murdered were also, like, introduced as really shitty people in some way, you know? Yeah. Like, I think it would have landed better in that way. You're like, if they, if we were seeing them doing something abusive or terrible and then they were killed by Jen, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Even, like, if Chris Pratt's character had come back to be a victim, like yeah. I said earlier. Exactly. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, so also, um, notably during the scene, uh, yeah, I think we, we have covered that fairly succinctly, but, um... Yes. Yeah, on our comedy show. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, um, yeah, there's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, toss the knife that they used in the sacrifice into the town's namesake, the Devil's Kettle, uh, to be found later. Um, very cool. Because we, like, it's inexplicable, we don't know where it goes. Yeah. Uh, we see that after this scenario, Jen didn't die, and she, like, just murders Ahmed, the transfer student, because nobody knows who he is or where he is. Um, it's just a random murder. Again, this sort of undercuts the message from the previous scene, I think. Yeah. Because this guy's, like, a victim of circumstance, mainly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Strange. Yeah. It's also, again, like, they could have just... It's, yeah, I don't know. This way they treat this character is just... A bummer. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Jennifer, we'll cut back to present day, Jennifer like shows that she's been, this, this is what she's been doing every month. And if she does this, then she's basically unkillable. And when she's mm. full, she like stabs her arm with something. I can't remember. And like it instantly heals and it's fine. Uh, she also threatens Chip here. Um, yes. if, if Needy doesn't toe the line, basically pretty messed up. Uh, yeah. What happens next? Yeah. We've got Colin's... We've got another sad montage in Colin's funeral. Yeah. And I've weirdly an amazing monologue from Colin's mum. Yeah, crazy. Very intense. Um, yeah. She says some, like, pretty horrific dialogue about, like, having to identify the body. Um, and also, like, <clears throat> like, really destroys the emo kids at the funeral here. Yeah. Like, they were talking about, like, him ascending on glowing wings and stuff. You know? Yeah, to be one of the dark angels. <clears throat> and the, the mum's like, shut the fuck up, basically. Like, my yeah. son is dead. Like, I don't have time for this awful silliness, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But it's... yeah, and then that, she's not seen again. She yeah. kind of, I don't really think she's a big role in any other movies. She just got a one perfect scene and yeah. You know, I don't know. Happy. I kind of don't know what the scene is for, other than like just to shit on the emo kids and their way of life. Like it's. I think it could have just been that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it could be actually. It could be another kind of tying in with the uh, the idea, and I'm thinking on my feet, so I might mess this up. But like okay. the idea that these bands and these like famous men that we've just seen the scene kind of vilifying, mm. that they build themselves on tragedy and stuff and they, right yeah and they and this is what they real this, people that, that are hurt yeah this is what they instill into like the their fans this kind of silly mm. notions as well like obsessed with tragedy and darkness and etc like yeah and what that what does that mean you know like if, is that actually in the face of true tragedy is that actually valid you know yeah yeah could well be yeah yeah uh so um the next thing, uh, the band is going to do the song at the, their, their whole, their whole formal is themed around this band and eventually yeah. they show up, which is crazy. Also, the, <laughs> notably the posters that they're making are in papyrus. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Just James say. Cameron again, like, watching, yeah. going like, weaving his way in, shadow idea. producing this. <laughs> um, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, so Needy does a bit of research into uh, the occult in the occult section of the library, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, I love that Chip even calls it out, just like, our library has like, an occult section? Yeah, and she's like, like, it's not big. Yeah, it's pretty small. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Uh, and 
Yeah, like, tries to tell Chip about this, and he's sort of sick of her being obsessed with Jen, and, like, says, takes this explanation of her being evil as her, like, breaking down, and also, like, them breaking up, which is interesting. Yeah. Like, because he just sort of can't deal with her being, like, he thinks she's going off the deep end, basically, and is like, okay, like, your obsession with Jen has gotten to this point, so are we, like, through? And she doesn't say no. She just she doesn't say no or yes basically, and he takes it that way. So yeah, that's some high school yeah. stuff. Oh, absolutely. And she says she can't go to the um, yeah the can't problem go with him, but she will still go. Which, yeah. yeah, which is weird. It's like very yeah. dangerous. Is what she's trying to say. For them to be together, I don't know. Who's, yeah. I think potentially through the threat of what Jen said before has brought this on. Uh, the like effective breakup. Who's to say? Yeah. yeah and yeah um we get a sweet this... little montage now of like prepping oh, yes. for the dance uh, uh any, any color you like is playing it's pretty good i like yeah we're getting the lyrics to um kiss with a fist by florence and the machine nice which i tried again to try to sing along to this pink <laughs> instrumental and it kind of worked all right i like but that then you're it trying immediately here immediately ends after you know florence gets some good money for being in the movie mm. she's great to um start playing some panic of the disco new perspective which very I true not sing over it yes i also very quickly want to note um on chip's computer in the scene in the background is just a like passport photo of needy his wallpaper <laughs> like it's like full face forward like just yeah. staring you down from the computer screen i think that's hilarious yeah like it's just such a niche little joke <laughs> that that would be his wallpaper. It's great. And he's got such a big computer, which I really yeah. like. Like, Oh, actually, hold on. I just really blanked out and was like, oh, yeah, because this film is obviously a period piece set in the distant past of 2009. No. And no, it's set, it was made in 2009. So I was going to commend them on having an older computer <laughs> and that being realistic. But uh, never mind. I'm pretty it sure in 2009 realistic. we had like flat screens and stuff at the time. Flat screen yeah. monitors. I don't know. Like we'd, it's definitely, Chip is definitely living in the past somewhat. Um, yeah, for sure. He likes the old stuff, you know. We know we got a couple of his like band recommendations earlier and they're pretty old school. So Yeah, yeah. he called um, uh, Phil Collins seminal. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> really good stuff he's the pink floyd listener among the characters of this film oh for sure yeah absolutely um yes uh jennifer is deteriorating once again and as part of this montage she it's time for her to feed again i guess this is another month later i don't really know it's not clear but uh yeah, yeah. uh yeah i'll say so because it's supposed to be two months since yeah like at the very very beginning yeah, so we get in, now, here we go, this is a good old sync. We get brain damage playing, and the lunatic is on the grass when yeah. uh, Chip is walking across a field in the mist. A never, like, perfect cut here to that line. Yeah. Into it. Oh, yeah. It's so good. It's very lunatic Especially because something vaguely threatening is happening, much like the vaguely threatening lyric of the lunatic is on the grass. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like lunatic is in the hall as well later when they're in the like dance hall kind of. That's oh. a little bit looser, but you know. Yeah, and she does some mind games like the lunatic is in my head. Yes, yeah, so, uh, and while he's walking in the mist, Jennifer like appears in front of him saying that she's really worried about needy and like le- leverages their relationship to like start a relationship of their own. Basically. Yeah. Um, she claims that Needy cheated on Chip with Colin, who's just died as well. Yeah. That's why she was so upset after his death. I love oh, that she no. also says, like, they were doing stuff you've never heard of. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hilarious line, yeah. honestly. I wish they'd, um, like, chucked in a line, like, they're doing stuff you've never heard of, like, and then just said, like, two really random words together to be like, this yeah. is a sex thing. Banana dance moves. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, Potato yeah. popcorn, the- man oh look out for that one <laughs> you, you need the peas on ice for that um <laughs> yeah uh yeah we get eclipse playing as the band starts to play they're here cold shoulder they've been very dramatically introduced by jk simmons yeah. Um, and yeah they start playing eclipse very good oh yeah <clears throat> needy can sense that jen is kissing chip i've written in my notes i don't know if that's true but she says so. something's up and yeah. she sees chip's name and like rushes off to find him at the end of playthrough two um yeah 
the band is playing in complete silence yeah. for us. A bit of an anti-sync. And uh, Jen and Chip go off to like an abandoned swimming pool for the final confrontation here. I kind of like the set. I thought it was like well made. I'm pretty sure the thing that she was chanting is like written in um, spray paint on the side of the swimming pool as well. Oh yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is an awesome set. Yeah. So there's a uh, Chip says he doesn't want to kiss Jen. Basically, he's like, uh, I'm not into it. And then yeah, she like turns and starts fighting and throws him into the water. Uh, there's like a big fight scene that plays out over breathe, yeah. which is you know the fight scene song. Hmm. <clears throat> Like, Breathe's so... And, like, it's not gentle enough to do your, like, ironic Kingsman-style, like, yeah. soft music to a fight scene. It's just, yeah. It, I don't think we're going to find a fight, fight scene that syncs beautifully with some with some lovely Breathe yet. Yeah. It, it doesn't, hasn't worked yet. No. Well, but someday, we'll, we'll continue to keep looking. Don't worry. Well, yeah, it's a lot in life. <laughs> yeah. So, so, it, so it goes. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Needy rocks up to the swimming. She at first goes to his house and like has a fun interaction with the mum and the and the little daughter who plays piano, which I love. Yeah, but um, just glad to see our yeah, friend she, again. <clears throat> yeah, she just rocks up briefly. Uh, but yeah, she like arrives at the swimming pool and Jen's bitten. Uh, col- uh what's it not, Colin? Um, Young Neil Chip's neck. Chip, chip Dove. Young Neil Chip. Young Neil Chip Dove. Is, yeah, eating a bit of chip. Delicious. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, she like pepper sprays Jen in the face. Uh, Chip gives her some pepper spray that his mum gave her. Yeah, um, gave him. Uh, and yeah, she proceeds to do the black vomit thing again all over them, and like hovers like six foot into the air or something. And there's a great line where she says, "Chip's like she can fly," and he's like, and she's like, "Ah, uh, she's just hovering. It's not that impressive." <laughs> yeah, I liked that. Very good. Perfect. Like. Uh, um, yeah so yeah there's they really hash it out talking with each other like spiting each other whether or not like needy's like is this all like to mess with me like are you trying to spite me here like is that what this is about yeah. and they have like a big argument and chip stabs jen through the chest with a pool net <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like one of those really long nets <laughs> <laughs> for like fishing stuff out of a swimming pool hilarious yeah that this is the murder weapon um but yeah of course jen lives through this because she's like full succubus mode she has enough power from eating a bit of um chip yeah that she's okay and yeah chip she gets away and uh chip dies at the poolside yeah. they say i love they say i love you to each other just before the on run, on the run crash <laughs> which is kind of funny to me yeah um and yeah, Needy's like, there's a really good shot of like Needy from above, directly above, as she's lying on her bed, like covered in the black goop. Uh, I just thought the framing of the shot was really good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she like resolves here to go and murder Jen, basically. And this is where we cut back to the intro scene where she's like standing creepily outside her window. Um, and yeah, they have a big fight to the death. Uh, in her bed and then floating above her bed yeah because because supernatural powers um the bff necklace hits the ground by the way and this is the like thing that takes away her power to survive yeah which is really this is where this is where she becomes vulnerable the necklace flying off like she starts falling to the ground it's i don't know what this means i don't know what this represents like is their friendship the source of the power no surely not i don't know yeah I don't know, I've a... But anyway, stabs her in the heart. Um, yeah, Jen says that she stabbed her in the tit, but yeah, okay. It was in the heart. Great. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, it's like swift cut to reality, basically, in that, like, this is a murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the mum rushes in and sees... <laughs> sees Jen dead and needy, like, over her body with a craft knife stabbed into her. Um... And yeah, cut back to prison, basically, to the existing existing Needy in prison. Yeah. Um, during the fight scene, Jen bit Needy and has transferred a bit of her demonic power into her so that she can, like, float away and get out of prison. Uh, felt, felt this was kind of unnecessary and weird. Yeah. Like, not really set up, but, I don't know, more catharsis gets to happen here yeah. because of this. 
um, she finds the knife and the little balls the scientists were using yes. out in the stream. I like that too. Yeah. This is like, again, a big like mana from heaven moment where like the exact thing that she needs appears right in front of her. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and it's cool that this like mysterious um, devil's kettle hole just like washes up to the side of a random road. Yeah, and exactly. just couldn't figure that out. No, they just had no idea. Yeah. Perfect. Because of course it would be. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wouldn't go nowhere. It's crazy. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so she like hitches a ride with like a friendly man and then <laughs> goes to like track down this horrible, the rock band. And we're getting like the credits, and, like the opening credits and the um, uh, great gig playing. And there's a, mon- a really cool montage of the the rock band enjoying their fame and the high life yeah. and doing drugs and stuff. And then immediately after that, it's the same kind of shot and music of like the murder scene yeah. playing out of the them forensic all dead in horrific. Dead. Yeah, them all dead in horrific ways, and it's it's shot the exact same, which I love. Yeah, I think that's really really clever. Um, yeah, so they get their just desserts effectively, um, and then. The movie ends with like some security cam footage, so that we can see that it was Needy doing the murder. In case you didn't, realize. yeah, I thought that was a little like, guys, we knew. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, and then credits. Yeah, cool. That's the film. That's the film. Yeah. Oh. What did you think? How did it sink? Oh, I was I trying to try to beat you to saying that this time. What did we think, and what? how did we sink? How did it sink? Did you did you want to steal it? It's my no, catchphrase, dude. I'm sorry. Ooh. This was all a power play. I mean, I'm, say I'm the needy of this, the two of us. That's right. I'm the Jennifer. No, no. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want that to be our relationship, Gareth, at all. Oh, that's not, I don't think it's us. We're not a complicated friendship. <laughs> We're just two dudes who like podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's damn right. Yeah, I think our relationship with Pink Floyd is complicated now. Extremely. <laughs> Much more complicated. <laughs> Um, but as for what I thought and how it sought, what I think, how it yeah. sank, um, yeah. I reckon we would have had some 10 out of 10 sinks if Pink Floyd had re, um, re-recorded all their vocals to be in that beautiful 90s and 2000s oh, emo yes. voice. Would have been ideal, yeah. yeah. If we'd be getting some, like, wasting away the moments that break up the dull day. <laughs> Incredible. Money, it's gas. <laughs> I Perfect. could keep going. Yeah. Breathe in the ear. The year. Um, I'm just going to let this ride. <laughs> and if your head explodes, I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. This is all great Perfect. for me. I'm having a treat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the listeners are loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I could feel, hear oh, my jaw well. click as I sung because I'm not a singer oh, at all. Well. So I'm hoping okay. that doesn't end up on mic. Well... Look for. Did you hear the jaw click? That's their like secret word this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So with that, I don't. Know, I'm thinking like we've got a, we've got a five on our hands. Oh, I kind of want to go lower. I did like there weren't that many sinks. Like other than the like brain damage one. Yeah. Um, which was really good. There were a couple, but I don't know. I don't think this is a strong showing. I want to go like four ish. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. yeah, let's go four-ish, and we put the ish okay. on the graph as well. The ish is on there. A four-ish. Four-ish. Sweet. Yeah. Lock it in. That's scientific as fuck. <laughs> uh, that graph Facebook page that I've secretly joined us in is going to be so mad. Yeah. That'll be right. All Don't right. worry. Shout Speak- out to the graphers. Yeah. Um, speaking of things that'll be all right, what is... Yeah next week's film james oh well i've got to actually think about it mate i usually sometimes i let the the fates decide as it were and don't think about what i'm gonna choose until i start speaking at the end of the show i've noticed like right now i'm picking up yeah Yeah, so whatever strikes me in the next couple of seconds is going to be the movie that we're going to watch oh my gosh i should start and that movie is going to be uh, Jumanji. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel good. <laughs> Bit of Van Pelt. This, I just pulled that out of nowhere, out of thin air. <laughs> so maybe it's the divine speaking to me. Yeah. And we'll get a quality sync. 
But until then, I guess, we'll be lost in that jungle. Yeah. Mm. Uh, um, well, yeah, until we get lost in that jungle, um, I've been Gareth Blackler. I've been James Barron. This has been uh, Sink Floyd. Tr- 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 trick us out, I will keep wanting to say. Trick us out hey, on trick us Twitter out. and all those good things. Tell your friends, yep. give us five stars on iTunes. And until then, we'll see you on the dark side of the moon. Yo ho hey, yeah. Ow! Oh, I just want to peel out on my guitar now. Yeah. <laughs>